For almost as long as there has been Digimon, there have been Digimon games. And when you make that many video games, inevitably some things are going to get left on the cutting room floor. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about eight interesting things that were left unused in the data of Digimon video games. Hey, come on! What's up everybody, welcome to the video, thank you for subscribing, and yeah, today we're going to be talking about 8. I don't want to do a top 10 or a top 5, I do want to do 8 things that I found particularly interesting related to unused beta prototype content that is found in Digimon video games. I want to give a shout out to the cutting room floor for this entire video, they are the ones who put the work in. There's a link to the cutting room floor in the description and the master page of all their Digimon video game coverage. They're the ones that put in the hard work to find all of these unused beta assets that are hidden inside. Digimon video games. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually unused Digimon throughout the franchise. In particular, I'm going to be focusing on Digimon World, Digimon Masters, and Digimon World DS. Digimon World has 3D models and sprites for Metal Etamon, Panjamon, Gigadramon, Kaminarimon, and Wegarurumon. These are all pretty standard. I could see why they might have gotten cut. They're very good Digimon, but maybe they didn't factor in quite how they wanted them. Although Wegarurumon is interesting to me. It seems weird to me that out of Agumon and Gabumon, the two rookies that you can initially get in the game. You can't get where Garurumon, you can't get Gabumon's ultimate, that just seems wild to me. You can put him back into the game with cheats or hacks, but it's very buggy, which is unfortunate. The rest of them I'm not particularly sad to see didn't appear in the game, although again, Kaminarimon is one of these elusive Digimon that keeps coming up in these videos. He was in the frontier of drama, I guess he was in Digimon World, although Kaminarimon doesn't actually have a model, so again, not a proper good look at Kaminarimon, even in the unused assets. But something that is interesting is that these unused Digimon also had unused items that corresponded to them. Metal Etamon with the Metal Banana, Panjamon with the Noble Mane, Gigadramon with the Giga Hand, Kaminarimon with the Electro Ring, and Wegarurumon with the Moon Mirror. And unfortunately, the Electro Ring and the Moon Mirror will just crash the game if you try to use them. Next up are some 3D models found in Digimon Masters, which are not in the final game, these being Ebemon, Male Bergeron, and Labramon. And then we have Digimon World DS, with unused Digimon including Skull Greymon, who is a boss fight, but there are sprites that make it a usable party member and it can even be deposited at the Digi Farm. They even gave him a happy sprite, even though again, he is an unobtainable boss Digimon in the final game. But also through hacking, you can add Tortamon, Devitamamon, Ebemon, Shine Greymon, and Mirage Gaugamon into the game, if you use Digi Convert. Again, these are unused Digimon and they are not fully functional. Unfortunately, when they are put into your game through Digi Convert and hacking, they are level zero. They have Minotaurmon as a sprite. They also begin to gradually slow your game down the longer you use them in battle and eventually will just crash your ROM. Although interestingly all these Digimon did go on to appear in the follow-up Digimon World Dawn and Dusk so it's a happy ending in some ways. I think I prefer if a Digimon's going to be unused to at least see it in a future title. Next up is Digimon Racing, my least favorite Digimon game. I played this on a stream and it was awful. If you want to see me streaming Digimon games, by the way, there is a link in the description to my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash can't underscore EX. We're about to hit a thousand followers on there. It'd be cool if you can come over and see me play some really good and some really bad Digimon games. <laughs> there you go. That's my call to action for this video. I'm one and done. So yeah, through a little bit of hacking of the European ROM of Digimon Racing, you can actually unlock a Digimon called Padlockmon. <laughs> to quote the cutting room floor, by changing the value at 0300547C in the European ROM to 0B, to highlight the next character after the last selectable character while in the character select screen, it will still show Secret Racer. However, if you have the code on before you go to the character select, it will instead show the name Padlockmon. Although the game always uses Agumon's voice regardless of the previous Digimon selected, it is possible to see and play as the hidden Digimon by exiting the Padlockmon screen and re-entering with the code kept on at all times. And as the cutting room floor points out, this is a joke that in the game when a Digimon is not unlocked yet, it has a padlock over its icon. But just such an interesting idea, I wonder if it was going to go down kind of like a tofu route in Resident Evil, where you would have actually been able to race as Padlockmon as a bit of an easter egg. Padlockmon doesn't have its own sprite, but I think just a padlock in a racing car would have been hilarious. <laughs> Next up, we're going back to Digimon World 1 to talk about some unused areas and a hidden tournament. The game actually has 22 tournaments, but only 21 are selectable through normal gameplay. 
play. The tournament is called the Royal Grade Tournament and any kind of Digimon can be met there. But they are completely unprogrammed so all their stats including HP will be zero and you don't get any prizes for beating this tournament. So definitely not intended to be in the finished game. There are also a lot of unused areas. A lot of them are glitchy with collisions but some of them seem to be basically finished including a lot of areas that look like they would have been part of Mount Infinity. There's a video by Anonym358 which I've linked in the description which shows off all these unused areas if you'd like to know more about them. Jumping over to Digimon World 3 now, there are these unused sprites for NPC characters. They share a lot of animation frames with NPCs from the finished game but seem to be kind of like blank templates. Maybe these were used by sprite artists as kind of a baseline for them to design characters over the top of, but we don't know. But what we do know is they're both in the game and they look like naked little babies. <laughs> Did I just say naked little babies in a video? Okay. And then back to the DS games, we have some demo leftovers. In both Digimon World DS and Digimon World Dawn and Dusk, you can see the screens from the demo version of the games in the finished ROMs. I always like this. Demos are weird to me because they run a huge gamut. I'm never sure whether a demo is the full game intentionally limited so you can only play a little bit of it, whether it's its own build and the demo data only contains demo data, or whether it's even completely different and is reflective of a earlier part of development of the game. So to see retail copies that still contain promotional material talking about the demo is really interesting to me. And interestingly in Digimon World DS, the English release has a screen from the Japanese demo, with the text saying, expected for release on June 15th, look forward to it. And the Dawn and Dust demo screens being nice too, you can see this title screen with demo, screen showing the controls, and then finally the thanks for playing the demo, look for both in store soon text. I just like it, I think it's neat, I've got a somewhat obsession with lost media, or media that's a little bit more rare, and I'm really getting into the idea of like demo collecting. There's a lot of videos online talking about rare demos or demo units, and I'm not gonna start collecting those because it's just an impossible habit, but I'm really fascinated by this, so seeing this in retail copies of the game is really cool for me. Next up we jump to the US and EU game Digimon Battle Spirit, which is a port of the Wonderswan game of the same name from Japan. Although interestingly the Japanese version does have an English language option that wasn't formally released in the US and the EU. But the Japanese version of the Wonderswan game has an option to link to your DARC Digivice, which was the Digivice of Digimon Tamers. Interestingly, the very same game, but in English on the Wonders one doesn't have that option, but something really interesting happened here. In the GBA version that was released in the US and the EU, there is a hidden menu option to link to the DARC. Unfortunately, this isn't as exciting as it may seem. First of all, it wasn't even called the DARC in the dub, it was called the D-Power, so that would lend credence to the idea that this wasn't supposed to be connectivity features with your GBA. But it's interesting to see just how much of kind of a direct port that the GBA version of Battle Spirit must have been that they were lifting full assets from the Japanese version and then just hiding them off screen. But can you just imagine if somehow you would have glitched your GBA game and seen the option to link up to a DARC? It would have blown my mind. And it's a feature I think they legitimately should have thought about in the Digivice VPET that they released in the West. Handheld consoles have been popular for ages. If there was a way to connect your Digivices to your Game Boy, your Game Boy Color, your Game Boy Advance, I could have really seen Digivices continuing their popularity for a lot longer. Also, now as an adult collector, how cool would it be to connect your Digivice to your Game Boy Advance that you blow the dust off from 15 years ago? No, we seem to be only a small bit of unused graphics, but the potential there, at least in my head, kind of huge. The penultimate thing I want to talk about today is that the File City from Digimon World 1 is inside Digimon World 2. There is a File City in Digimon World 2, but it is very different to the one from Digimon World 1, but both the background layer and the buildings layer of the File City from Digimon World 1 is present in Digimon World 2's data. This probably doesn't indicate much. It's possible that the File City that was going to be in Digimon World 2 would have just been the same one from Digimon World 1, but I think it's probably more likely that they just imported an asset that they already had to test things like collisions, sprite layers, and things like that. But it's definitely very interesting to me. Again, we talked about this in the unused Digimon from World DS that ended up in Dawn and Dusk, but it's super fascinating to me when you see assets from past games end up coming into new games. I have a weird amount of nostalgia for the File City from Digimon World 1, even though, as I say, it's not a game I ever beat. So I think it would have been cool to just start Digimon World 2 and see the original File City. And then 
And finally, in the retail version of Digimon Rumble Arena 2 is the full prototype of that game, a beta or possibly even alpha version. PS2 games typically use things called dummy files. This would be because a PS2 game was under the 4.7 gigabyte limit. The PS1 had a 660 meg capacity and obviously the PS2 had a 4.7 gig capacity on DVD. Padding or dummy files are used to expand and make sure that all 4.7 gig or 660 meg is used of that disc. It's not always fully clear why. I've heard reasons ranging from the fact that when you burn the disc, if you look at any disc that you've burnt yourself, if you've only burnt like half the data, there will be half the disc burnt one color and the rest unburnt. So maybe they wanted a uniform burn. I've also heard that it being the full size of the disc made it burning easier or there was some kind of requirement from Sony to do so. I don't fully know the full reason. If you do know why padding and dummy files are used, let me know down below. But typically there would be a lot of junk data that was left in the game. Sometimes it's literally just tons of zero written to the file but in this case they used a full prototype version of the game and just left it on the disc as padding and this prototype has a lot of interesting things going on with it first of all it has a completely different title screen to the finished version which is incredibly common in beta and alpha builds of games but interestingly it uses the season one version of the us digimon logo rather than the kind of frontier era logo that we ended up with in the final game it of course features a debug menu which you would expect and a very different looking character select screen. Rather than the squares of the finished game, we instead have these circles with a very bare bones UI. Also, interestingly, there are characters in this prototype version of the game that do not feature in the final version. With the prototype version including Hawkmon and Armadillomon who did not feature in the finished build. Again, you can imagine if I'm excited about demo screens being in retail versions, how incredible it is to me to find out that there is a full prototype that you can play. You can extract the prototype type from the ISO of Digimon Rumble Arena 2 and play the prototype. It's incredibly unfinished and barely playable, but you can launch it. <laughs> a prototype build of the game that was dated a year before the complete version of the game. That's fascinating to me. But anyway, that's the video. Which is your favorite piece of unused Digimon video game content? Let me know down below. I wish there was more and I wish there was more of recent games. There's next to nothing that's been unearthed from Cyber Sleuth and Hacker's Memory. I don't know whether this is due to lack of interest or just because there's nothing in there, but it's making me even more excited for the future of Digimon video games and what we might find hidden in the code if more people poke and prod. Digimon Survive might have some interesting stuff, I'm just saying. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video, I do appreciate it. Like I say, I stream Digimon games all the time on my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Khan underscore reacts, so if you want to check that out, that'd be really cool. And welcome to the new outro screen where I thank my YouTube channel members, including my Digi Destined level channel members, Crimson Dragon Slayer, Forest C, and Anthony Bontomassi, thank you guys so much. My Tamer level channel members, Mike McNulty, Theo Navar, Reese Williams, Carlos Gonzalez, and Tippy, and to everyone in the Khan Club, thank you so much for holding it down. I'll see you next time when we go digital. <laughs>